Hello and welcome to English Literature at Stratford Grammar School. Thank you for taking the time to familiarise yourself with what we offer here. We're very excited to welcome you here in person. Um, and basically we're going to go over a few things you can expect to encounter if you come to study with us in terms of the course content, some of the structure, and of course the great benefits to you if you do decide to come and um, study. Okay, so English Literature then, in a way it's a course that promotes itself. You know what you're signing up for, of course, uh, based on your GCSE experience, but it's important that you understand the levels that are expected of you and, of course, the benefits at the other end um, for you to, to continue on the course. We call it a facilitating subject then, in the sense that it's very highly regarded by a number of unrelated subjects, to put it that way, in, in universities, because you're showing a very high standard of core skills that they hold in extremely high esteem. For that reason, then, it's not un unlikely or uncommon that you would find an excellent English literature result on a medical applicant's profile, for instance, or a STEM applicant's profile. It's highly regarded in all aspects of admissions because it's difficult uh, and you get, as I've said, the, the kind of rewards that are concomitant with that. One of the things that you're getting then as a very definite bonus in addition to your mastery of literature is an excellent sense of the, the wider sweep of the history of ideas as they relate to art and culture and that's something that we really pride ourselves on here. It's our goal to make you not only a sophisticated reader, but somebody who's um, curious and knowledgeable about the history of art and politics and society with literature at the centre of that story. Um, and that's something that we really pride, like I say, we really pride ourselves on in the way that we teach uh, and interact with you. In a more practical sense, those are kind of the standout career options, I suppose, that you can expect somebody with a literature degree to pursue. Public relations, journalism, law, of course, further postgraduate study in English. And there are many other things, including marketing, education, of course. But essentially, it's versatility as, as a key strength. We're really proud of the material that we select you to study. And there's an added um, incentive that, if you like, a long form of coursework, 20% of your overall mark um, is comprised by coursework, which gives you a good boost to your exams. Okay, I'm Dr. Quip, by the way, should have said before. I'll hand you over now to my colleague, Dr. Nixon. Thank you. Okay, so um, Dr. Quip's given you some of the reasons why English literature um, might be a subject for you, um, but I think in particular, um, I'll think about why Stratford Grammar School is, is a place you would want to consider if you are already thinking about English literature. Um, essentially, um, we're a small school, a small sixth form, um, but the English department here are all specialists in our subjects with a great passion and a great um, love for what we do. Um, and because you'll be working in small groups with these very um, highly educated, highly specialised teachers, and um, we think we can give you an experience that you wouldn't get in very many other places. Um, you will have personalised one-to-one -one support for your whole two years here, um, but within that kind of friendly collegiate atmosphere, um, we work within kind of a seminar format um, that's a very closely related to the university experience, so we will sit as soon as COVID allows us around a table, face to face, discussing and defending our ideas about text, um, and everybody gets the chance to speak, and everybody has got ideas that they share, and those are supported and fostered and, and stretched to, to be um, excellent discussions and, and engaging discussions as well. Um, and because of the way that we teach and because of the support that we can give our students, our pass rate is, is 100% um, since we moved to the New Exam Board in 2015. Um, so we will mitigate for any, any weaknesses that you might have and we will help you to grow as a student. Um, and at the top end, all of our, our best students have gone on to study English or medicine or dentistry or, or, and other prestigious courses like that at um, some of the top universities, um, Durham, York, Sheffield, um, recent graduates gone on to this year. We've got a couple of um, Oxbridge um, hopefuls, applicants, in our English literature cohort as well, and so we can help you fulfil your ambitions in that way. Um, as we are teaching, um, it's, it, the exams are split into three, 
um, at the end of year 13, there's, there's a drama exam um, where you would do Shakespeare's King Lear and The Home Place by Brian Friel. Um, myself and Dr. Cook will split those texts between us. I'll, I'll be teaching The Home Place um, in year 13. In year 12, I'll take charge of the prose part of the um, course, where I study Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and Sam Selvin's The Lonely Lungeons with you. We'll take a whole year of those two texts, and that's one exam, one question on those two texts. And Dr. Quick across year 12 and into the year 13 as well, and because it's quite a large course, uh, we'll be doing Poems of the Decade and the Romantics as, as the poetry text that, that we've chosen. Um, and as we've already said, uh, the coursework module is worth 20%, and I'll take that um, towards the end of year 12, we'll make a start on that, and then into year 13, we'll be aiming to submitting quite early in year 13, hopefully. Um, okay, so I will let Dr. Quick take you through the drama part of the course. Okay, so, so as outlined the content then, um, King Lear and the Home Place, it's a nice variety there. This is worth 30% of your overall mark then, and it's assessed by a two hour and 50 minute written paper. You choose one question from two for each text. It's very much rooted in the form of drama and the different opportunities for study that that presents in terms of analyzing dramatic productions, elements of stagecraft. For the Shakespeare particularly, the, there's another assessment objective once you get into the minutiae of, of how you assess on the extent and the, the accuracy and the invention of your wider critical reading where you bring um, an evaluative eye to the play through the lens of other critics and what they've said about it. There's also a strong element of theory, uh, of tragedy in, in the way that we teach too. Um, and in the home place you're getting a real insight into um, 20th century Irish drama and our intention is as always that you start to see parallels between the texts, not simply the dramatic ones but across the course and so you can start to understand some of the contextual and conceptual ideas from these texts um, across the whole range of things that you study. Okay, I'll hand it to Sir for prose. Okay, so I uh, will teach you the prose module across the whole of Year 12, pretty much. Um, we go through two fairly short but very dense novels, um, Heart of Darkness and Lonely Londoners, and this is really um, one of my favourite teaching experiences that I have over the course of a year. Um, Heart of Darkness is, if you know anything about it, it's a, it's a text written at the height of the colonial period. Um, concerning really the scramble for Africa and, and the devastating impacts it had on that continent, but from the perspective really of, of a, a colonizer who has their own kind of issues with, with what they're seeing happening there. So in the light of um, Black Lives, Ma Lives Matter protests this year, um, these are really live and very important issues that I really enjoy and I'm enthusiastic about bringing into the curriculum. How do you deal with um, this legacy of the past that, that our country has um, and look at it from a, a contemporary perspective. Um, my students do find that really rewarding. Um, and we compare that because we have to on the prose module with the text written in the 1950s by one of the very first Windrush migrants, another issue that's been in the news now. Um, so uh, one of the really first generation of people who would consider themselves to be a black British person um, and that experience and that identity being formulated on the page in front of us. So to compare Selvin's depiction of the racism um, that he faced as a new immigrant to Britain with the, the, at the perspective that Conrad brings to the, the colonization process in Africa is, is rich and interesting and we address issues that are, can be uncomfortable at times, but in a way that I think I find to be a very valuable experience. So of course we look at the textual aspects, the, the formal features of these texts and the, and the way ideas are presented, but at the same time we have these huge and wide-ranging conversations across the year dealing with very, very important and live issues. So I think it makes year 12 a very rewarding year, and I don't think it's an experience that you can get in very many other schools, certainly not in the area. These are two unusual and, and weighted texts that we take on, and I'm very proud to be teaching it. Um, and 
how we would pass you back to Dr. Quick to discuss the poetry module that he teaches. So we've gone for the romantics then as, let's say, the historical uh, component of the poetry course. And then the post-2000 contemporary unseen component is mandatory. Every edit cell, every level student has to do that one. Overall, then, it's worth 30% of the ADL. Like the drama assessed by a two hour, 50 minute written paper. And like that one also, you choose one question from the two. In this then, um, in the romantic strand, section B, there's a strong element of context to the way that paper's marked and that's reflected in the teaching here. This is where essentially you get that payoff in terms of the wider history of ideas um, and intellectual trends that run through the romantic period right up to the present day. Tying in certainly to what Dr. Nixon was talking about with the prose choices, um, many of the discussions that we have about post-enlightenment politics and notions of the individual seem like very contemporary discussions to have, and it's great to go back to these foundational documents in some sense of, of what um, of what the individual is. It's such a, a crucial sort of stage and post in that story uh, that we address in the Romantics, uh, and then. There's a neat kind of parallel, I suppose, in, in terms of the contemporary content as well, because many of those poets work in, let's say, a post-romantic tradition, and so we can carry over much of our learning from Year 12 um, into the Year 13 section and really sharpen our skills as, as analysts of poetry. Okay. I'll hand over to Sir. And so the final bit of your assessment, alongside those exams, is the last 20%, which is based on a 2,000, oh, sorry, 3,000 year old word essay. Um, I will teach you um, about a text called Things Fall Apart, which is kind of the very first great African novel written in English by Chinwara Chebe. And then from there, it's, it's up to you to bring your passion, your ideas, your identity, um, into that piece of writing. Um, we choose a second text, um, we, we discuss together, we do a lot of the, um, the teaching in this module one-to-one -one, um, over the course of, of several 20-minute, half-an-hour kind of discussions. And by the end, I won't let you submit this piece of work until it's absolutely, I think, the best piece of writing that you'll ever done up to that point. Um, we will go back over, you'll have to defend what it is that you want to write, you'll have to do the research, you'll have to develop those skills um, of online research. I'll, I'll go into some of the great research libraries that we have in the area of kind of finding new ideas to bring to your discussion. Um, and in the end, um, we'll submit something that, that is a, an outstanding um, intellectual work. Um, I really believe that, and I've, I've never had a piece of coursework submitted to me that that student wasn't incredibly proud of. Um, some of the choices that people have brought have been kind of unusual, perhaps. We've had um, comparisons between Things Fall Apart and The Virgin Suicides at the moment, which is producing a great essay. A Handmaid's Tale, but equally we've had Macbeth, we've had autobiographies, um, we've had collections of short stories. You can really follow your passion and come back with a discussion um, that interests you and engages you as a reader. So I think it's a really nice and um, exciting part of the course for most people to be able to bring their passion to what they do and be rewarded for it. So inevitably then, much of this is conditional on how life's going to be um, when you're studying with us. But to refer back to, to normality as it was when there was no COVID, and certainly this is what we're hoping to resurrect. We go on lots of visits um, to the cinema and to the theatre in the Northwest. We're, we're, we're richly sort of resourced in that respect in terms of our local options, not just in Manchester, but further afield into Lancashire and to, and to Liverpool as well. Also, the, the density of great universities around here gives us plenty of opportunities to make contact with them and the open lecture series for A-level students that they might do to broaden your knowledge of a particular text or a particular topic. We're also planning on getting eventually uh, up to the Lake District when that's possible as part of the romantics topic for you to absorb some of the, the atmosphere up there um, when we study words with particularly. And so essentially that, that's how we characterize ourselves. We're an, an outward thinking and outward facing department and we, 
we know that we're presented with lots of opportunities here to enrich your learning we fully intend to take. And then finally, really, just to take you through um, where English literature can lead you, um, we are aware that English is considered um, very highly by almost every university um, in terms of what students who've studied English literature can bring um, to their departments. Um, once you've, you've graduated from Stratford Grammar with, with that A-level, it's clear that you can discuss and defend ideas, as we've said, that you can communicate well orally, and you can synthesize difficult ideas, bring those together, and um, present them and defend them in writing as well, which are key skills for every university degree, and especially for those ones um, that are more challenging and more demanding, and they won't have the time to teach you how to do that. So. Those of you who are interested in going on studying law, um, education and journalism, obviously, and PR and marketing all are very heavily communication-based degrees. Um, but if you're, you're thinking about applying for something else, uh, medicine, dentistry, in, in any of the STEM subjects, or, or, um, having English literature on your CV um, demonstrates to those departments that, that you can cope with the rigors of, of academic study at a high level. So as a First subject is amazing, but also as a third subject to go along with a couple of sciences or a varied selection of A-levels, I think English literature is always a wise um, decision to make because it, it will push you towards things and not close off avenues for you. Um, so it's, it's a good A-level to take. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and follow us on Twitter, of course.